in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed the reason why Many people begin to run a marathon when they shoot the gun. Sometimes they are up to 50. Some already know they will not finish. But you find a few people just running, maintaining that tempo. And after hours and hours of running, they are still moving. And at the end, just one person reaches the finish line. And he's done. Let me tell you this. Ask your man of God the storms that he has had to go through in his own life as a testament I can tell you stories upon stories that will make you cry this man standing before you is a testament of blood dripping on the altar make no mistakes about it this is a sermon that many people in church they do not like to hear this is why we claim many things that never happen because not everything in the spirit is a gift there are realms that are rewards. There are rewards for enduring. It says that he that endures to the end will receive a crown and a white stone. Hallelujah. Read about Abraham. Do you know what it meant to be barren for 25 years? Then on top of that, your maid now has a child. And then on top of that, your child is born. And when he's 12 years, God says, go and kill him. Not let him be killed. You kill him. The Bible says he got up early. You would think that the barren, the 25 year barrenness problem would be the last challenge Abraham would ever have. No. Abraham, look at the trouble that came with Lot. Look at all the troubles that happened. How about the young man, Joseph? What wrong did the young man do? He just went to bed like you did and had a dream. I saw the sun. I saw the moon. I saw 11 stars bowing to me. And the first trouble in his life came from his brothers. They threw him in a well. I wondered what he was saying in that well. Lord, what am I doing here? I love you. When you love the Lord and yet you are in a well, I will tell you what to do shortly. I hope this message is blessing you. Hmm. Hmm. There are some cups you don't pray to pass over you. You only pray for grace to drink it. But if it is to sit down, remember the disciples were trying to lobby politically for a position on Jesus' left and right. And the mother came, you know, women came and said, look, my sons are here. Would you consider them? Jesus said, the space is available. But here's the condition. Can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism? All the disciples who said, I will go with you, go and find out what happened to them. Peter, who was in a rush to say, no, I, I won't deny you indeed. This thing called destiny and this thing called enlargement is not a Pentecostal issue. It's not just an issue of saying, yes, I will go. It's wonderful. But I need you to really understand. It's the reason why so many people profess it sincerely and yet never come there. It's not because God is unjust. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the world of men. And if you do not build stamina or capacity, there are many doors that God will keep closed to help you as an act of his love for you because he has vetted you and said listen i can't bring this burden on this person you can't go through it when they brought joseph out of the well i'm sure joseph will say this is the end of it thank you jesus it's over 
only for him to know that he's been sold for 30 shekels. My brother selling me, okay, fine. He now goes to the house of Potiphar and then God begins to bless him. The Bible strangely tells him he's a prosperous man, favored of God. I'm sure he was comfortable. Things were already working out now. And then here comes this woman. Are we together? Yes. She comes to him. What was his sin? He was handsome. What if what is good in your life becomes a reason for your pain? His dream took him to the well. His looks put him to the prison. Just because I am a handsome man, when has beauty become a sin? And the wife came and listened carefully. They had every evidence against Joseph. Not every evidence is evidence. Because clearly her cloth was with him. How could you deny now? And he took Joseph to the prison. Now listen carefully. The prison is where both good and bad people meet. Don't conclude on anybody you see in the prison. The moment you find people in a prison, be careful because the prison is the launching pad. Read your Bible for glory. Whether you are Paul and Silas, whether you are Jesus yourself, are we together? Whether you are Joseph, after the prison, the moment you see anyone in the prison, start celebrating. Listen, what I'm teaching you for many of you, you will not need this message now. It's after two years from now, you will look for this tape in a hurry and listen to it one night and say, now I understand. You don't need light in the day. You only need light in the night. Now, please listen carefully. Joseph is in the prison together with other people. If they told you, who is the person in the prison? You see all these criminals. But there was somebody who was a king there. He was about to be literally the possessor of the entire Egypt. And he was there. And when the time was full, he had endured. Do you know the test he went through in prison? The test of joy, the test of relevance, the test of value that he never counted God unfaithful. He saw two people, his own contemporaries, sad. And he said, your countenance, what's wrong? And he began to interpret the dreams. And then the king called one. And he said, please, when you go to the king, advocate my innocence. And the guy said, don't worry. I have your back covered. He thought it would be after 24 hours. They'll say, suddenly, you are innocent. Come out. Two days became two weeks became two months became two years how could i be so close to victory and one man's carelessness adds two more years the guy forgot but did he really forget no prophecy was playing out when it was time for him to come out of the prison listen you do not know why God kept him in that prison. Let me tell you one of the reasons why God kept Joseph in that prison. He did not keep him there. He hid him there. The kind of glory Joseph had, they would have killed him before the day of his rising. What looks like a negative thing? Moses, when you find yourself being abandoned in Egypt, you are hidden. You did not miss your path. There are many times God uses negative circumstances. God does not cause evil. But there are many times he can use it as a tool if he finds room to bear his glory. He can hide you in the midst of circumstances that distract you from exposing yourself too early so that you can last until the time prophecy is ready to release you, to announce you. Are we together? And... The king had a dream and the heavens were shot over the wise men and the sorcerers and the necromancers and the wine presser said i remember my wrong this day there was a young man 
and the Bible says the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon that night if he had known that would be his last night in prison that by the next day he would be a prime minister do you know if the man remembered to tell Pharaoh about Joseph they would have brought Joseph out and he would have gone back to Potiphar's house They would have said, all right, sorry for everything. Compensate him. No labor for two weeks. After that, he can continue. We know that he was in the prison two years plus the years he spent before his encounter with the wine presser. We don't know how long that was, but he remained there. There are mountains, there are challenges that sometimes can last. Listen to me. You must obtain the staying power. The staying power. One time, I was praying for a couple. This is a true story. They were trusting God for the fruit of the womb. And please sit down. When I was praying for them and the Lord opened my eyes. And I saw three children running around. True story. Running around and playing and then the next time they entered a car, all of them as a family, and they were going somewhere and they had a ghastly motor accident and I saw that everybody died. And then I came back to myself. I said, how many children do you have? He said, we don't have any children. You've never had children? Yes. I said, okay. How long have you been married? Maybe eight, nine years thereabout. Never. <laughs> At best, I've had miscarriages. Then I understood the vision. I said, what you call delay was God preserving a kind of pain from you. Listen, beloved people, there are many times in your life that your pain is your gift. This is a difficult message to understand, but pain can be a gift. If you get to heaven today and you are looking for Jesus, there are many ways to know him. If you use the crown alone, there are many elders who have crowns. Tell everyone to lift their hands. There is a scar that only Jesus has. What was an object of shame yesterday is now the symbol of his glory and royalty. There are times that warriors will be summoned and called and your scar will be the only reason to be allowed to pass through certain doors if you have not gone through certain things even when they call for employment on certain offices they say we need certain experience you must have you had an experience with abc then they say you can go joseph came out of that prison not with the plans of remaining i'm sure he was out to just interpret and go back and when he spoke to the king in a moment genesis 40 genesis 41 he was exalted in one day one day he said i am pharaoh and it is only in the throne that i am above you but as far as administration over egypt is concerned it will be at your word and immediately he had the opportunity to marry the daughter of Potiphera, the priest of On. And he was given great possessions. I wonder what happened the day the exalted Joseph saw Potiphar's wife. Hello, madam, how are you? Hello, sir. What you meant for me for evil? It was a journey. He told his brothers. Listen. Before you start your journey to greatness, there is a scripture that you must keep at the back of your mind. For we know that all things, not some things, for we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are the called according to his purposes. I'm not a chef. But many of you cook. There are ingredients that you do not want to taste. 
before you put in the food. It is very inconveniencing. When you are peeling your onion, sometimes tears will come out of your eyes. That is the price you have to pay for being so close to it. Are we together? Watch how you make a lovely meal. Sometimes you add sugar, sometimes you add this, sometimes you add that. And you already know what you are trying to combine. Sometimes you have to leave certain ingredients under fire for a long time. There are others who don't need that much fire. Then you add this, then you add this, then you add this, then you add this, then you close the pot, then you open it again. And what you have, when you put it on a beautiful tray and you serve, when people taste it, they say, my God, what is this? But find out how it was made. There are other things, chicken and the rest, you have to marinate for hours. Is that true? And live there. Lonely path. All things work together. He didn't say all good things. All tears. All pain. They work together. For the good of them. That love the Lord. And those who are the called. According to his purposes. For many years in ministry. I had the resources to buy a vehicle, but the Lord would not allow me to buy a vehicle. I was... I cannot tell you how many times the Lord made me empty my accounts and I did things that did not make sense. There was a time my account was hacked. And quite some serious money was taken out of it. I went to the bank to meet with the managers and all the people there. Now, I was a righteous man by the grace of God and I love the Lord. I sat there at the meeting and the people, look, you have all the people who stay close to you. They must write a statement, you know, police and all of that. And I said, no, these people are sincere. Say, well, that's none of our business. We are doing our work. And I sat down there in the midst of all of that. You can't imagine how the millions I had lost. And then the Lord spoke to me and said, son, what are you doing here? In the middle of a meeting. I said, I mean, my money, they just use these guys just. And the Lord said, who owns it? And I said, you are the one I'm a steward. Listen, 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 listen. And he said, if it, if it is true that you've given me everything, Get up from that meeting and walk away. God is my witness. I looked at them and I said, all right, thank you for everything. Let the money go. No, 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 no. This is our reputation. I said, listen, this is my money. I have chosen to forget about everything. And that's it. When I walked out of that bank, there was a joy that I could not explain. There are some things you cannot understand until you are in certain situations. That joy. You would think that would be the end of it. Many years ago, it was in the seminary. I was diagnosed of a very strange fungal infection. It started eating up my head. It was a very serious situation. I thought it was just a little, maybe some issue that antibiotics and the rest will solve the problem. But it metamorphosed into something very serious. I got to a point where they could not allow me to sit in front because it was inconveniencing people. No matter how early I came for a program, I would have to go to the back. Now, the students love me, sincere people, but there was a time I had to wait. While people are at the dining hall, I would have to wait. After food is shared, my portion will be brought for me. <laughs> they prepared a solution that I would have to rub on my head in the morning and then soap or something in the night. 
if I forgot to put it one day, it will show. Sometimes there will not be water and I'll have to stand in the rain. Look, let me tell you the truth. Don't claim titles, so I am apostle, I am prophet. Let your scars. He said, let no man trouble me. Hallelujah. I remember the pain and the discomfort. One time they, I went to the lab and they had to take some sample. It was so painful to culture it. Where would I be if you left me now? Where would I be You waited, you waited, you waited. God gave an instruction to go for a crusade. We were just starting. We prayed and we fasted and fasted and fasted. We now went for the crusade, anointed but broke. You would think excelling in one area will cover for the deficiency of another area. Are we together? Preach the gospel with power. There were not many people who were gathered, sincerely speaking. That was the first disappointment, but I was happy at least we were starting. Not more than 50 people. People look at me today and say, Apostle, there is a grace upon you that does this and that. Let me tell you how it came. People don't just listen to you now. You see, we're opening up these cars for you so that you will know when people honor people, it's not human worship. They are not honoring just the human vessel. They are honoring a man who is a compendium of victory, sacrifice, endurance. <laughs> Hallelujah. Do you know when we got there, the money to pay for the hotel, to pay for the sound, I asked the sound people to come. It was on credit. Imagine you are a sound man and I'm a preacher shouting the faithfulness of God on a crusade ground preaching that God can do everything there are times you have to preach the truth even if your life does not yet have the results because you are you are bound listen you are bound by a covenant to be truthful to God's people regardless your experience you must stand for that truth I'm showing you a price it's a serious price I was done preaching when the crusade was over everybody was happy there were bills and bills there was no way they didn't have anybody that you can call and say help me the sound people said listen we came here and I had to plead with them look for someone who got some amount to give them and I promised them just give me a little time you can imagine how do you I mean on one hand you are celebrating healings and miracles but on a, where is the god who raised somebody the, a blind eye opened how much is the bill that he cannot pay so when we sing today that god is faithful for me it's not a special number there are many stories that make that song come alive let me show you from where the anointing flows the anointing flows through the allowance that your scars have created. Are we together? I remember one time the sound people were sad, they were angry, and they had threatened that, listen, this thing was going to become a police case. I was not a criminal. It was the gospel I was preaching. The apostle you celebrate today by the grace of God, I'm telling you some of the stories. Immediately after that tragedy, God helped us, we paid, and the next year God said, go for a crusade again. 
And sometimes God will act as if he is not aware, as if he's not aware of everything that happened to you. You failed in a business and you went to complain and say, Lord, I just lost a million dollars, two million dollars. And he says, that's all right. Next week, start again. God for you. He talks to men like he's talking to himself. Hallelujah. But after that time and that season, God opened me up to a realm of glory and grace. I told you for many years, God would not allow me to buy a car. What is it about a car? Oh God, at least to help my mobility. The day I instruct you, I will never forget people will come and meet me with a seed of a car and I'll say, Lord, is this it? And you say, pray for them, bless them and let them go back with it. What a man of God. But the day God began to bless me and to open up doors for me, I'm not saying this to brag, I hope you are learning. I began to see levels of the anointing and levels of grace. And the Lord spoke to me and said, because you survived this, all these things and glorified me in it, I will give you the keys of nations, the keys of territories. Listen, there are positions you don't get politically. No, you are enthroned by his grace. And when God puts you there, the nations know. And listen, you are given authority to lift others too. One time, before the Lord would break me into the realm of wealth and abundance, I was praying. Maybe you've heard me share it. Minding my business, interceding for myself and God's people. Suddenly my eyes is open from my room and I see this creature looking like a dinosaur giant eyes one of the eyeball was like the human head two of that having a tail that could be detached from itself and it was looking at me with fierce anger and he said so you think you can bring god's people into abundance i had seen the spirit that sits over the finances of people this is not the issue of business or buying and selling When I speak over your life and your finances change, let me tell you where the anointing came from. It didn't just come from claiming. It came from deep spiritual encounters. So, when, when it's time to pray and release mantles and graces, you would do it because of God, but you will also have a bit of respect and regard for the vessels. Are we together now? not everybody fakes power oh, my people let me tell you the truth there are people who have met God genuinely they have a covenant with God and God has chosen to honor them for their name for his name's sake and he has done all of that for the sake of his people now please hear me there are spirits that follow men there are spirits that follow offices. There are spirits that follow mantles. There are spirits that follow programs. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. We're about to pray now. We're now really talking about warfare. There are spirits that follow men. Once you are in Christ, once you are a human being, the devil has a chance over you and he will try to do everything. That is their jurisdiction. But there are spirits that follow offices. That means the day you find your place in destiny, the operation of those spirits are activated. They don't follow you as an individual. They don't care your name. They are just interested in the office that you occupy. There are spirits that follow mantles. You see, they don't follow men, they follow mantles. So when a mantle comes upon you, you have to understand how to deal with those spirits. I said it yesterday, 
Now, there are sides to the understanding of things like deliverance and warfare that may not be scriptural. But there are sides that is very, very scriptural. And if you do not understand this in this end time, you will be in trouble. I need to say this so we pray. Hallelujah. When Jesus went to pray and fast, Satan left everything on earth and was fasting with Jesus too. As soon as Jesus was done fasting, the first person he saw was Satan. There are some fasts that don't drive him away. There are some fasts that bring him. Who is this person? Who is this? What kind of prayer and consecration is this? Listen, you would think that Jesus, full of the Holy Ghost, full of the word, full of prayer, Satan would come and be shaking under the anointing. And there is Satan standing. As soon as Jesus is done, he now looks at him and says, All right, I've been waiting. You are hungry. Don't deny it. You are hungry. Turn this stone to bread. And he said, It is written. Then the Bible says that he took him to a holy city and said, Fall down, for it is written, He shall keep his angels charge over you. They will bear thee up on their wings, lest you dash your feet against a stone. Then the Bible says he took him into helper, please. Helper. He took him into an exceeding high mountain. Hallelujah. And showed him the glories of the world in a moment of time and said, bow to me and I will give you because it was given to him. He said, get the hands. And Satan left him for a season. That's what your Bible says. The next time Satan would come to him, he did not come to him directly again. He came to him through the compassion of Peter. Peter began to talk prohibiting him from dying and he looked and said get thee behind me Satan it's still you even though speaking to a compassionate man and he said Peter Satan has desired to sift you like wheat but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not that when thou art converted strengthen your brethren the next time he would come he came through a man who was already a victim of greed his treasurer you've heard me say it that God is still looking for treasurers. His last treasurer disappointed him. That space is still vacant. So when you say you want to be his treasurer, it would take more than financial understanding for him to give you that position. Because the last one had financial intelligence. The problem was his heart. So the training of a treasurer starts from the heart. Listen. When Elijah showed up carrying the mantle, the spirit of the Antichrist activated Jezebel. Are we together? Under the reign of Jezebel, the prophets of Baal excelled and the prophets of God suffered. It was time for Elijah to deal with it and said, listen, let's go to Mount Carmel. Let's settle this once and for all. If Baal be God, then let him be served. If God be God, let him be served. Say warfare. When they went to Mount Carmel, he said, I will start with you. Call upon your God and do everything you know to do. And they called from morning till night. Nothing happened. And he said, get, get away now. Let it be my turn. When it was time for the evening sacrifice, the Bible says he rebuilt the altar, placed the sacrifice, poured water upon it, and called upon the God of heaven. And fire came from heaven, licked everything. And they ran, they chased the prophets of Baal, killed every one of them. If you are Samson, because you are a warrior and you are a deliverer, there is a spirit that is activated in Delilah. It's the spirit of seduction. The assignment of seduction is to use your need to distract you. Listen carefully. Seduction is not seduction until it thrives on something you really want, legitimately. The operation of Delilah is not lust. The operation of Delilah is not immorality. The operation of Delilah is using a need that you have to distract you. That's what happened to Samson. Every day she would come to Samson and say, what is the secret of your strength? Then you would tell her something else. Then she would try it. You would think that Samson, after two or three times, he should say, you are an evil lady. It was not about the physical person. Something was happening in the realm of the spirit. 
as soon as the hair of Samson was caught, the first thing that happened was they plucked his eyes. Hallelujah. When Elijah returned back in John the Baptist, Jezebel returned back in Herodias. And they caught John. John became angry, offended at Jesus to the point that he died a very cheap death as a birthday gift. Listen very carefully. If you are the apostles of the Lamb, then get ready for the government. That is what will fight you. For the apostles of the Lamb, it was not women or business people. It was the government. So when you say, I am an apostle or a prophet over the territory, don't just laugh. Master the art of surviving the assaults of government. There are many people who just enter territories and say, God has sent me here. Congratulations. Do you know the spirit that fights the apostles and the prophets? If you are a businessman, listen carefully. It is still the manifestation of Jezebel. Go and read Revelations 18, Revelations 19. That she goddess that rides upon the horse. It was because of her fornication with the kings of the earth that they have worked valiantly through their merchandise with her. Why am I teaching you the concept of warfare? Because you need to understand that your call, your mantle, and your stand for Jesus Christ has an implication in the realm of the spirit. And the devil will do all within his power. South Africa, please hear me. There are controlling powers. This is not our subject. Otherwise, I would have taught you in details the, the administration, the organogram, and how nations come under siege. Nations do not come under siege just through policies. Hallelujah. The secret of surviving warfare, listen carefully, is to understand the art of prayer and intercession. If you do not understand the mystery of priesthood, there are certain heights that you cannot attain unto. Hallelujah. There are many levels and cadres when it has to do with the prayer ministry. There are people that the Bible calls watchmen. There are people that the Bible calls intercessors. They all have their roles. I have set watchmen. He said, I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower that I will see what you will say to me. There is a level in prayer where when you rise to, by reason of your rising in the spirit, God can trust you with what is happening to nations so that you can see and stop or allow. At that, listen, at that point you have become a gatekeeper in the spirit. Hallelujah. When it was time to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, God had to come and seek the cooperation of Abraham. Is that in your Bible? He said, shall I hide these things from Abraham? There are people God does not hide things from. When God wants to do something over South Africa, he comes to them and says, this is what I want to do. And they can say, Lord, if you do this, you will destroy both the innocent and the guilty. So I stand by reason of my office and I plead for your mercy to hang on. Please listen to me. Not everyone is a preacher. There are people who have become watchers over territories. They have become the eyes of God, supervising the progress of his work and his program across territories. Can I tell you the truth? When God wants to honor you, you will encounter Jesus, but you must encounter those graces to rise in that territory. Ignore them out of pride, you will suffer for nothing. It's true. It's an honor God has given them. We're talking about enlargement. There are people if you ignore in South Africa as far as the program of God is concerned, you will be born again but you will suffer in a way that will surprise you. Because God has exalted them 
and place an unction upon them. They have become carriers of keys that open up territories. And that includes government. Is someone learning? Warfare. When God wants to help you, he shortens the distance between you and this man. So that your access to them would come in a hurry. Oh, Saul, you will keep roaming around till the day you meet this mysterious personality called Samuel. A man whose word does not fall to the ground. What kind of a man is that? Abraham, even though there's prophecy upon you, you will keep wasting your time till you meet Melchizedek, the king of Salem. These men you see have become systems. They are not just men. They are flesh and blood. But certain covenants have elevated them to a position in the spirit. Recognized by heaven and recognized by hell. Because they have survived certain things. Please listen. Listen. Now, they are, I'm not talking about a false sense of human worship and some of these things. No, this is not what we advocate. But let me tell you the truth. I will be lying to you. If I tell you all men are the same, we are equal in Christ. The same Lord is rich unto all. But the sacrifices, the depths that people have explored in the realm of the spirit and the treasures they have found in doing business with God in deep waters has elevated them to a position where they have held keys. Keys that open and close the gates of nations. Let me tell you this. When God makes you a gatekeeper, the nations will know. It's not something you announce and say, I am, all, all that is nonsense. They can swing wide the gates of men's destinies, heater and teeter, and the heavens will open. There is a, do not miss tonight. I want to show you tonight, we're looking at the prophetic dimension. There are deep things I'm going to show you. But hear me, brothers and sisters. Let me give you three keys very quickly and we'll wrap up. Three keys that help you to be able to war a good warfare as far as your destiny is concerned. I will not explain them, I will just list them. Number one, discernment. The first key you will need in the art of warfare is discernment the ability to perceive spirits the ability to interpret the writings on the wall so that you do not call good evil and call evil good there are many many things that carries the semblance of evil but they are actually sent for your blessing so you are not praying and binding things that are consistent with where God is taking you to you need discernment there are many many prayers that if they are to be answered you will not rise so God as an act of his mercy just allows you just to keep exploring your knowledge there while he remains consistent with his program for you. You would have called the lion's den a negative place for Daniel. You would have called the fire a negative place for Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. The second key that helps you to survive warfare as far as destiny is concerned is joy. Listen, joy is a deep mystery in the spirit. Joy is not happiness. Uh -uh. Happiness is circumstantial. Joy is a revelation. He says, I will joy in the God of my salvation. One of the ways that you know that a season is about to be open for you is joy. There is a baptism of joy. There is no physical evidence that should warrant that kind of joy. But your spirit has picked something. Listen. For many of you, you are in that season right now. There is nothing physical as it were. But your spirit man has gotten something. Gotten something. Ah, lay hold on it. Lay hold on it. Don't lose it for anything. Doesn't matter what is happening. Because that joy is your strength. Every time you are in negative seasons, listen, 
don't start praying and binding and casting foolishly no i'm not saying that as an insult you need to discern this writing on the wall it looks like evil but lord speak to me everything that carries a semblance of evil we pray and bind it no 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 you will delay your rising discernment and then joy joy lord i do not understand what is happening i just lost my job but joy 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 like a river so you are laughing and they say how about the rents do you have it now i don't have it but something the spirit of god is welling up joy sometimes you need to lock your door and dance alone and rejoice alone and dance alone it may not make sense hallelujah the bible says why do the hidden rage and the people imagine a vain thing that the kings of the earth set themselves against the lord and his anointed and the bible says god will look from heaven and laugh before he now administers judgment listen we do not reap with joy we reap in joy that means your food is in the kitchen you will have to enter the kitchen to get the food if there is no joy for you there is no harvest lose anything but not your joy mm -mm. key number three we have to pray the third key are you ready now the third key that you need is the power of prophetic intercession ah yes sir the spirit of prayer must come on someone today not just not listen help them please help them please i release that grace upon you i release that grace take that grace in the name of jesus christ i release that grace take that grace take that grace the art of the altar the ability to hold on to the horns of the altar take that grace receive it as a mantle in the name of jesus the ability to pray the program of god not just give me tea and give me bread no controlling the gates of destinies in the place of prayer power with god i stretch my hands take that grace in the name of jesus christ take that grace help this man take that grace take that grace i stretch my hands towards you take that grace receive that grace let it come upon you like the dew of Hammon. in the mighty name of jesus christ them please i'm releasing it again the mantle of prophetic prayer the art of the altar take it take it now take it now take it now take it now receive that grace begin to pray in the spirit in one minute can i pray for you i don't know this man but there is a grace that is coming upon you i stretch my hands upon you may that mantle come upon you in the mighty name of jesus you will wax valiantly says the spirit of god valiantly you will do mighty things for him in the name of jesus christ listen listen please listen we're about to round up can i tell you this those who do not know how to pray the program of God for their lives and for nations will only allow these spirits prevail and keep aborting destinies. There is a grace for prophetic intercession. It's not a mechanical thing, no. Where are the intercessors in South Africa? 
I decree and declare at the count of three any one of you called into the office of a watcher and an intercessor may this mantle activate that office at the count of three one two three take that grace now take that grace now take that heaven take that grace now take that grace now I quicken the spirit of the watcher I quicken the spirit of the intercessor arise over South Africa pray the program of God stay the power of darkness open your mouth and begin to pray in one minute the program of God in South Africa the program of God over your destiny is at the mercy of your understanding the art of priesthood the mysteries of the altar this is where we control the climate over territories destiny over house of treasures over South Africa let the king of glory we command a triumphant entry a new season of enlargement of increase over the program of God over the purposes of God over the destinies of men hallelujah please hear me South Africa hear me listen to me I submit to you by the spirit of grace that if the altar of prayer suffers in your land the program of God will also suffer it does not matter what goes right if prayer goes wrong everything will go wrong in the book of Daniel Daniel was not a prayer warrior Daniel was a politician but there was an angle of an intercessor and a watcher the spirits of the Medes and the Persians governed the land of Babylon and a parliament had to pass a bill to stop prayer for 30 days let it not be that under your watch South Africa goes down spiritually let it not be that under your watch South Africa goes down financially goes down as far as the program of God is concerned please hear me please hear me please hear me in one minute my time is up you are going to declare over your destiny the two lift gates of my destiny a father be open for the new season go ahead and pray the two lift gates i part you hither and thither it's time for a new season man of god pray for your ministry pray for the program of god it's time for enlargement open up be open financial doors be open Ministerial doors be open. Great 
greater exploits virgin dimensions virgin territories Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Who is this man? Yes. Are you a pastor? Where? Because I'm not seeing you in Nigeria. I'm seeing you in Europe. Where? Huh? I'm seeing that you are black skin. But why am I seeing Europe on your head? I, I have European citizenship. I live in Europe. Oh, you live in Europe? Yes. You came from there? Or yes. you are South Africa? I, li I live in Europe. And I have my house, my business, my church in Europe. That's all right. I want to yes. pray for you. Listen, this conference was for you. Huh? Because even though you are in ministry, the anointing is going to come upon your business. And honestly, what God will do through your life will surprise you. Can I pray for you? Lift your hands. You have a business in Europe. That's what I'm saying. Father, you have granted us the grace to open up destinies. I speak to you by this apostolic and prophetic mantle. Receive that grace. Let your business be open now. Take that fire. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, let it be the beginning of a new season. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, go back and walk signs and wonders. Go back and experience the favor of systems, favors of structures. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We have to close now but let me encourage you please whatever it takes for you to be here early and to open up your spirit will set this place on fire tonight in the name of Jesus Christ I believe that tonight there are mantles that has been looking for people and those graces will finally find you in the name of Jesus who is the son of the living God but as for now I declare you are blessed the grace to have discernment even in these seasons receive it right now the grace to remain in joy until victory is established I release upon you and the grace to pray through to pray consistently May that grace be released upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Give Jesus a big hand clap. Hello beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.